All right, welcome everybody to this uh, Market Outlook 2021, the year of grey rhino, brought to you by uh, Gananga Investment Bank and managed by our company, Wellford. So let's just take a minute so that all of you can come into the room first. So how is everybody doing? If you are doing okay, type yes, okay, in the chat, chat box so that we know that you are doing awesome. If you're doing okay, type yes in the chat box so we know that you're doing awesome. All right, excellent. So right now, I think the room is almost full. Huh? But uh, today, we also open out another channel, which is YouTube. So if you are streaming in from YouTube, yeah, this uh, Shen Chu here from uh, Wellford. And today, we are very excited to be hosting this topic. Market Outlook 2021. Now, one year that the COVID-19 pandemic uh, is here, uh, how is the future hold for us? Okay, so today, uh, our speaker, Derek Tan, will tell us why 2021 will be the year for the grey rhino. So what exactly is rhino? I guess uh, Derek later will uh, tell you why exactly it is rhino. All right, so this webinar is brought to you by uh, Kananga Investment Bank in collaboration with Bursa Malaysia. So before we begin, just want to go through some disclaimer. Whatever we share on this webinar is only for educational purpose. In no way that we give any recommendation to buy or sell any securities that uh, we mentioned in this webinar. So if you decide to make any investment decision, you do it at your own risk. All right, now allow me to introduce our speaker today. And uh, Derek Tan has also uh, spoken on Kananga platform for many, many times. And his session is usually very uh, received overwhelming response. And today, due to popular demand, we are having him back uh, in our Kananga session. So uh, thanks for joining us today, Derek. Thank so you, uh, Dave. allow me to uh, introduce him. Now, Derek Tan is the founder of Timing and You program dedicated to raise awareness of the looming sovereign debt crisis, guiding individuals to survive and profit from the devastating financial crisis through the period of 2015 to 2022. Now, he has been an active trader and investor in the stock, commodities, currencies, bonds, and property markets since 1999. Now, apart from fundamental analysis and technical analysis, he is also a practitioner of the relatively unknown but amazingly accurate cycle analysis to improve the probability of winning in different investment asset classes. So if you have not heard about cycle analysis, then today you're in luck. Now, Derry has developed a proprietary three-dimensional timing and yield relative risk index, RRI, which is probably the first of its kind in the world that combines cycle analysis technical analysis and fundamental analysis parameters to give a holistic risk-to-reward assessment of the U.S. stock market. Derek is also the 2019 World Excellent Young Leader awarded by the prestigious Ya Zhou Zhou Khan for his vision, courage, and influence to drive positive change and be a force for good in the world. So he has been featured in numerous media in Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia. So without further ado, let me hand over the time to Derek to tell you why this year is a year of uh, gray rhino and how is 2020 like for us. Derek, over to you. All right. Uh, thank you, Shane. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, well, I see 500 plus participants uh, in this uh, Zoom uh, 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 over here. So uh, can you guys just say hello to me in the chat box, just key in hi so that uh, I can see you guys. Hello, hi, good to see you guys. Uh. So uh, I think tonight uh, is a session that I feel is very important. I really hope uh, not only five or five of you guys, I think we are also live in the YouTube. Please take a piece of, uh, piece of paper, a notebook and pen please write it down because whatever I'm going to share with you guys tonight is going to be very important. Also, please go and get your notebook and pen, all right? Also, with that, let me just go to my slides. And we'll kick off uh, today's uh, uh, 
my sharing uh, proper. So tonight is actually Market Outlook 2021, the year of the grey rhino, yes. Uh, in fact, I'm starting to see signs of uh, uh, what I've been telling you guys uh, uh, for the last few years. In fact, this is my fourth year speaking. I'm very honoured to speak for Kanaga for the last four years. This is my fourth year. Whatever I've been telling you guys about the sovereign debt crisis, the signs are here already, ladies and gentlemen. For example, the US bond U has been spiking up. Do you all know that? If you don't know, don't worry. Later uh, in the presentation, I'll show you guys more. All right, so let's move on. Uh, I don't need to introduce Raya. So, wait, but one thing very important, whatever I'm going to share tonight is only my personal view and opinion. All right. It's not a recommendation or advice. I cannot give any recommendation or advice. Neither can Shane. All right. So uh, we are not going to be responsible or for any of the action that you're going to take. Also, please take note of this disclaimer. All right. So now, uh, I believe you guys attend a lot of webinars. Uh, so there are, you listen to a lot of trainers or speakers. So different speakers, they have their own definition or time frame. Also, please allow me to share my definition of time frame so that you can better understand the material that I'm going to, sh that I'm going to share with you guys later on, all right? So whenever I mention short term, it's anything less than one month. So it could be two weeks, one week, it could be a few days or even intraday. That's what I meant by short term. Intermediate term is more than one month, less than one year. So it could be five months, six months, but less than one year, but more than one month. Long term is from one year to less than 10 years. Ultra long term is 10 years or more. So for tonight's uh, presentation purpose, I'll concentrate on the short to intermediate term for the rest for the next one to two years. Uh, I'm seeing the next one or two years, that means 2021, 2022, it is going to be very chaotic. A lot of people thought that with the COVID, uh, COVID uh, vaccine, ah, everything is going to turn, uh, turn into a rosy picture. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I know Chinese New Year just over. I should be saying more uh, good things, but I rather paint you guys the real picture. All right. Uh, yes, we are economy data uh, are bouncing up. Why? Because we have a very low base because of last year, because of COVID-19. Oh, so, but don't be too happy, ladies and gentlemen. Like what I mentioned earlier, COVID-19 has already done its damage. All right. Uh, uh, at the later part of uh, this presentation, I will share you guys. Uh, yes, I've been, if you follow me for the last few years, I've been talking about US bull market, all this thing. And we are, I went through a mail up, all this thing. Ladies and gentlemen, all good things have to come to an end. And I think this year is the year. Oh, unfortunately, I, I, I to spoil everyone's mood, but uh, I'd rather tell you the truth oh, based on my opinion. All right. So now, tonight, whatever I'm going to share you guys is uh, something very interesting. Uh, as you guys know, out there in the market, there's uh, something known as fundamental analysis made known by Warren Buffett. All right. There's technical analysis whereby you look at price chart uh, to determine uh, the entry and exit point, all this thing. So there is something called cycle analysis or in form, short form CA. All right. This is where I specialize in. All right. Uh, what is CA? I think this is something very important because it allow me to see probably something is going to happen this year and next year. So what is CA, ladies and gentlemen? It's actually a field of studying, uh, analyzing recurring pattern and repetition to forecast timing and turning point of different investment asset classes. I just want to share this, ladies and gentlemen. You may know fundamental analysis or FA. You may know TA, technical analysis. But please understand, these two deal with price. All right? But cycle analysis deal with timing. All right, it's only when you are able to combine FATA in terms of price analysis and CA in terms of cycle analysis, then you are able to look at the financial asset classes uh, in more detail, or I say a three-dimensional view. As compared to FA and TA, you are just looking at a two-dimensional view. Also, whatever I'm going to share tonight is something very interesting, exciting, or let's get prepared for it. Also, 
uh, tonight I'll be covering this FATA and the CA so that you guys have a better understanding what's going to come next, or which I'm, I think is very important. All right. So now, 2020, uh, I think this is what we uh, uh, call the back, uh, Black Swan event. We have the COVID-19. Uh, what is Black Swan event? That means not a lot of people expect it and it happened. <laughs> Just like COVID, I know I, I didn't expect it to happen. And because of a lockdown, I've been stuck in Singapore for almost one year already, ladies and gentlemen. So this is what I meant by Black Swan. So that's 2020, but ladies and gentlemen, 2021. Uh, a lot of people say it is the year of the golden ox. All right. But to me, uh, uh, I think otherwise, uh, I tend to think this is the year of the gray rhino. Then what is a gray rhino event? It's an event uh, that is uh, very likely to happen, but it's just that a lot of people close both their eyes and pretend to, not to see it coming. That's what we meant by gray rhino. And the trigger of this great rhino if, uh, uh, event is what I call the SDC, which is sovereign debt crisis, GMC, which is a global monetary crisis. I know there are some of you guys who are new over here. I probably need to explain this two term to you guys so that you guys have a better understanding what's going to come in the next two years. All right. So now, sovereign debt crisis is actually a bomb bubble, ladies and uh, gentlemen. Sovereign means government. That means bond. All right. We are seeing a bubble mainly in the government bonds. Or government bond. If you still don't realize, ladies and gentlemen, on the global debt a surge to an all-time high of 281 trillion in 2020. All right, if you look at the red circle over here, that is 355% of the GDP. Ladies and gentlemen, 355%. This bubble has grew even bigger in 2020 because of COVID-19. Uh, because of lockdown, uh, government had to get, uh, uh, carry out stimulus plan. Also, uh, one way is to borrow money on, by issuing government bond. All right? This is another, if you still don't know how devastating it is, ladies and gentlemen, this is the global debt. Now, this blue line here is actually for advanced economy. This red line here is actually for emerging market. This is a chart from uh, the debt, uh, global debt from 9, 1880 to 2021. Let's look at the blue line. Can you see because of COVID-19 lockdown, the debt has been skyrocketing even higher than uh, the debt issued in World War II and World War I. You know, when we fight war, we need a lot of money, right? Uh, but can you imagine because of COVID-19, uh, the debt has skyrocketed. No need in advanced uh, so-called economy, also an emerging market, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, piles, the, the government, they are piling on tons and tons of debt, ladies and gentlemen. This can't go on, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to say this. All right. Uh, probably you guys are not familiar with bond market. Uh, so I, I need to explain a bit over here because I feel this is really important so that you can be, have a better understanding what's going to come next. All right. A very simple term. I try to explain very simply, ladies and gentlemen, what's the relationship between bond price and bond yield? So when bond yield comes down, bond price will go up. It's like a seesaw. On the other hand, when bond price comes down, bond yields will go up. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, earlier I mentioned, we are actually on the verge of the full implosion of the sovereign debt crisis. And there are signs already, ladies and gentlemen, from where? This is an uh, ETF in the US market. Uh, there's an iShare 7 to 10 year U, uh, tre US Treasury bond ETF. That means they reflect the 7 to 10 year US Treasury. It's an ETF, uh, bond ETF. Can you see since last year, August, wait, okay, this year 2020, this is 2021. Uh, can you see bond prices collapse during the initial part of the COVID 19? Just like the stock market, 
during February, March last year, bond prices collapsed. Then it recovered very strongly, just like the stock market. But since August last year, can you see it has slowly turning down? And even recently, it has gone into a waterfall decline. Can you see that? That means uh, the 7 to 10 year US Treasury bond, they are collapsing. Oh, it's probably around a support around this uh, blue, two blue line over here, this uh, 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 support zone. Oh, my, my take is, uh, take note, uh, once this support zone is broken through, ladies and gentlemen, all hell will break loose, ladies and gentlemen. Bond market is going to collapse. Remember what I said earlier? Bond price and bond you go in opposite direction. This is bond price. Next, I'm going to show you guys the US 10-year treasury yield. Because the bond prices is coming down. That's why the yield is heading up. Can you see this was uh, 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 last year, the COVID-19, when it first uh, 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 exploded, or the bond yield came down. Or then it stays low, but can, can you see since August last year, it has been crypting up and for the last one month plus two months, it has been wow, like going into a parabolic rise. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we are back to the uh, uh, so-called pre-COVID-19 level. Can you see? We are back to the pre-COVID-19 level. That's why I say once this support level is taken out, or once this recent level is taken out, ladies and gentlemen, or all hell will break loose, ladies and gentlemen, and we will see sovereign debt crisis coming into a flu implosion. Please take note, uh, I'm very serious. Uh, this is something very serious. I know just after Chinese New Year, I should be saying about good things, uh, but I, I'd rather tell you the truth. Uh, the global bond market is 10 times bigger than the global stock market when the bubble bursts, the result is going to be devastating. Oh, I'm not joking, ladies and gentlemen. And signs are there already, as you can see. All right? So now, the, the thing is this, but one thing I want to share with you guys is this. Even though the bomb mark, uh, bubble bursts, we have printed so much money, right? Money is going to shift from why the bond prices is coming down? Because they are selling enthusiasm. They are selling the bonds. That's why bond prices drop. Huh? So the capital that exit from the bond market got to go somewhere, right? It cannot disappear in the thin air. And we printed so much money, correct? So where do you think you'll go? That's why I can tell you the money will move into what? Into the largest market in the whole world. I mean, uh, that, uh, how, how should I say? The, not the largest, one of the largest market in the whole world that can absorb this trillion of dollars, which is the US stock market. That means money is going to shift from the public debt, uh, which is a government bond, into private asset like what? Like US stock market. Like later I'll show you guys commodities. Ladies and gentlemen, commodity bull run has started. Uh, this is a chart of a CRB, or right, Commodity Research Bureau. It basically represents so-called the index for commodities. So can you see, uh, uh, this is, uh, of course, 2020, commodity prices also collapsed. Remember, uh, last year, April, WTI oil even dropped to uh, the lower 650. But can you see the strong recovery of the commodity prices and it has even broken above this down trending line look at the strong recovery that's why i can tell ladies and gentlemen we are going through a commodity bull run all right inflation is coming back and when inflation is coming back interest rate has to go up ladies and gentlemen as inflation as inflation go into very high level Federal Reserve has no choice have to increase interest rate. Please take note, uh, Federal Reserve can only influence short-term interest rate one month, two months, three months. They cannot influence 
10, 20 years. That's why you see all the bond prices is coming down because longer term interest rate uh, like this, the US 10 year treasury rate, is not, it cannot be controlled by the Federal Reserve. They can try to influence it by buying all the bonds. But ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, free market is going to decide the long-term interest rate. And this time around, free market already has its say. They are already selling the bond already. Also, Federal Reserve, they can well, keep interest rate very low, but ladies and gentlemen, later on, they will be forced. This time around, the commodity bull run, uh, I can tell you, it's not because of an increase in demand. Because we are still in a lockdown. How can we have so much increase in demand? It's because of a shortage of supply that's caused by all this lockdown. Or we should be seeing higher inflation, higher food prices, all this thing. Or, and no choice, later on, I'm looking at later second of this year, Federal Reserve will be forced to increase interest rate. Or this is my view, all right? So I've uh, touched on the so-called the SDC already, the sovereign debt crisis. Now clearly, I'm going to touch on the global monetary crisis, which is GMC. Ladies and gentlemen, think about it. Uh, the central go the government, they have been uh, borrowing money so that they can even hand, hand cash right into the hand of their citizen. As we are speaking now, uh, the U.S. is contemplating 1.9 U.S. trillion of stimulus spend for the COVID-19. A lot of money has been printed. But do you think, uh, seriously, I think not only Federal Reserve, ECB, a lot of central, they are printing, but do you think they can keep on print and print and print and print? I don't think so, man, ladies and gentlemen. All right? A time will come. You know, if it's so easy, we can just print our money away to solve all this problem. Then we don't need to do anything. All of us don't need to run business already. And then sit down there and wait for the central bank to print money. But global economy doesn't work this way. We still need to produce goods and services. You understand what I'm saying? Also, ladies and I can tell you, this SDC, sovereign debt crisis, and GMC, global money crisis, is reflecting a collapse in the confidence in the government. All right, that's what we are seeing. And it's going to be devastating. Why? Because it's coming already. And I will just show you the signs are there already. And I see the full implosion of the SDC and GMC uh, in 2021 and 2022. Then how is it going to impact the stock market or even the commodity market or even currency market? Later, I'll share you guys. Also, this is a background we need to understand. SDC and GMC is coming. Uh, watch out for this uh, support in the US 10-year uh, uh, bond. Or if the US 10-year, you go above this level, ladies and gentlemen, which is about 1.5. I don't think it's going to sh just shoot through. I got a feeling it probably will pull back a bit. Then later on, you'll just, uh, as the sovereign debt crisis uh, implode further, uh, the US 10 year treasury will then go higher from there. Also, this is my view. All right. Another thing, before I go into where I think the stock market or even commodity market is going to hit, uh, let me show you. Uh, please copy this now. I think this is very important. This black line, solid line here, represent the bond market. This dotted line here represent the stock market. This thinner black line here represent the commodity market. So as we can see, bond market tends to peak before the stock market which tends to peak a hit of the commodity, boom, uh, commodity market. On the other hand, can you see bond market uh, bottom up a hit of the stock market, which bottom up a hit of the commodity market. This is the trend. 
All right. One thing I want to say here is there's no time frame uh, between the peak of the bond market and the stock market or the time frame between the stock market and the commodity market. There's no time frame. It varies uh, based on the economy condition of then. Uh, but I want to show you guys stock uh, bond market always lead the stock market. Stock market always leads the commodity market. So as I showed you guys earlier, there are signs that the bond market is starting to break down already, right? That means the next to break down will be the stock market. Oh, so now let me just share you guys where I think the stock market, especially the US stock market will be heading. Because I think uh, when the US stock market uh, uh, sneeze, uh, the whole world will catch the cold. Also, that's why it's important to uh, understand where the US stock market is heading, all right? So now let's take a look. This is S&P 500, one of the major US uh, indexes. Uh, this is since 1999 until 2021. Also, can you see, we have gone through a bear market here. This was because of a NASDAQ bubble in year 2000. Then we went through a bull market. So this is what we meant by one cycle of bull and bear. Then this was the 2008 global financial crisis, a bear market. Uh, S&P collapsed by 50%. Uh, this was due to the collapse of the Lehman Brothers or the subprime crisis. At the peak, it was the Lehman Brothers. Huh? All right. Then we went through a bull market for the last 12 years since 2009. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a bear market. Huh? This was uh, the COVID-19. COVID, COVID, I always say uh, last year, I probably am the only one who keep on saying, this is not a bear market. This is 2020. This is probably just a, a, a deep correction because of a health crisis. That's why, can you see how strongly it rebounded uh, after the, the, the collapse? All right, so to me, we have been going through a bull market for the last 12 years, since 2009. So ladies and gentlemen, cycle analysis, uh, bear, bull, bear, bull. So after bull, what do you think is coming next? Can you key in the chat box? Bear, bull, bear, bull. After bull, what is coming next? Can you key in the chat box? Let me take a look. What do you think is coming next? Yeah, a lot of you guys put it right. It's actually a bear market is coming already, correct? On oh, this bull, I just want to let you guys know, this bull is really very old already. All right. How did it manage to stay so uh, long? Huh? Because all the QE huh? uh, and the, Fed, the, the, the central bank keep the interest rate low uh, with so much money flooding the market. Uh, uh, one of the places you'll go is the US stock market. Huh? That's why it keep on going up. All right. But I always say every party has to come to an end. Uh. All right. And I think the party is going to come to an end in the second half of this year. Not yet. The bear market, I don't think is going to happen soon, but it's going to happen in the second half of this year. That means June onwards. All right. Also, do think about that. So now, what is going to happen in the short term is this, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm going to show you guys uh, my propulsory uh, 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 cycle chart. Uh, remember, remember, I want to say this again. Cycle analysis is about timing and turning point. So with my cycle chart, I, I can actually do forecast of the timing and turning point. For this case, is the down zone. Or well, probably some of you guys is the first time you look at my cycle chart. So I need to explain this to you guys. Uh, I want to say this. This is not a price chart. This is not a price chart. Uh. This is a cycle chart. Crunch on the 2nd of uh, March, about two days ago. 
That means I take historical decades, hundreds of years of down zone data plus a future market data of down zone. I put it together, billions of data points. I put it into a software. It does a crunching of 45 minutes. In the end, it will produce this red line, which is a cycle chart. All right. It does not have Y axis. Uh, it only has X axis. So when we see March 01 means 1st of March, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, 1st of April, 1st of May, 1st of June. That means this is for the month of March, April, May, all the way until September. Can you see? Cycle analysis allow me to do forecast. That's why I can forecast until September. So what is this cycle chart is telling me now? Is we are going to have a turning point probably around early May. Can you see? Remember, cycle analysis is about timing and turning point. So we are seeing a turning point around early May before the next major turning point here in around September. Oh, let's don't go too far. Let's come back here. Oh, when I project this cycle information onto the price chart of down zone, ladies and gentlemen, it's telling me that this few days, I think the US market has been uh, red, right? All right. So the thing is, uh, this uh, chart of down zone, can you see I've drawn a blue support uptrending line? So now down zone is being supported at this blue uh, 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 uptrending support line. And it's a 50 day moving average. This line, blue line here is actually the 50 day moving average. Well, I do see that because of the cycle chart, when I impose this uh, so-called uh, 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 cycle uh, data onto the price chart of uh, down zone, uh, my take is this, uh, we may have a chance for down zone to break below this 50 day moving, this cluster of support here and probably go a bit lower to test this support around 29,200 and 29,800. There's a possibility. Or we may see that until probably around early May. All right. So what I see is this, ladies and gentlemen. Also, if this support is taken out, we may see down zone hit a bit lower to around this support zone of 29,200 and 29,800. Then it bounce up or it may just hover around here until probably early May before it goes up. All my take is this bull market is not over yet but we're probably going to see a correction. In fact, we are in a correction. Uh, I hope it can be a bit deeper of a correction. Then it can shake up the weak holder. In fact, uh, down zone is still doing quite all right. The damage I can tell you is done is in NASDAQ. This NASDAQ, uh, uh, you, you know a lot of techni technology stock uh, has been suffering. All the what Facebook, uh, Amazon, uh, Tesla, oh, all has been uh, hammered left, uh, left, right, center, right? So can you see uh, last night, Nasdaq also dropped a lot. If you know about chart pattern uh, in technical analysis, we probably may have a left shoulder, head, and maybe a right shoulder. So if going forward, if this blue support line is going to be broken, ladies and gentlemen, we may see NASDAQ heading lower to probably one two, uh, uh, one two five zero, or if or from one two hundred to one two five zero around here, but it's not going to collapse. Uh, just like down zone is not going to collapse yet, uh, the support zone is here, and here, a uh, correction probably will be good, and based on cycle analysis, it may happen. This correction may happen till maybe early May. All right. So hopefully a deeper correction. If not, 
it may just be some consolidation around here before probably early May, it will turn up and go even higher for the general US market indexes. Uh, that's why I want to say short term, short, short to intermediate term, probably correction or consolidation. But after that, we are going to continue with the melt up, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, this melt up, we will see down zone head to 34,000. This is my forecast. Uh. Down zone heading to 34,000. S&P 500 to 4,000. NASDAQ to 15,000 before this aging US bull market is finally over. All right. And based on what I see on the cycle chart, uh, the next turning point probably is here, August, September. Oh, that's why I say this bull market, after the correction is over, we probably see the melt up continue. And I'm seeing the bull market probably end in the second half of the year uh, uh, towards the, maybe the the the... the, the end of third quarter or uh, fourth quarter. This is what I see as of now. I do let you guys know this uh, cycle chart is updated uh, per month. This is what I uh, uh, show you all based on the latest data that I crunch. Also do take note, uh, this cycle chart got expiry date uh, only for one month uh, until end of this month. Then next month, I will crunch again with the latest data then the cycle chart may be different already. Uh, but uh, this turning point in May, it has been, I've seen this for quite a long period of time. So let's watch out for May, but be prepared. Uh, the bear market uh, probably should be in the second half of the year. All right. Uh, when? Then your, 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 your question will be, David, what still got? Melt up, uh, melt up. Then when? When the bear market is coming? I think that's a lot of people's question, right? And now uh, I'm going to answer this question. When bear market will come, uh, based on my definition is, we need to see a 20% decline from the top of the US indexes. For example, Dow Zone or S&P or NASDAQ or even Russell 2000, a 20% decline from the top to the bottom. What do I mean by that? Let's say assuming uh, 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 down zone is 1,000. It dropped 20%. That means it dropped to 800 points, a 20% drop. Or we need to see a 20% drop plus we need to see a significant macro deterioration. When these two criteria are satisfied, then I will say we are in a bear market and we will see a much bigger decline, possibly 30% or 40% or 50% or more. Also, it needs to satisfy these two criteria. Then you say, Derek, this one I know, drop 20%. But how do I know whether there's a significant macro deterioration? Ah, this is where uh, uh, my proprietary timing and your relative risk index will come into the picture. In short form, it's called RI. Uh. All right. My this RI is a proprietary tool of mine, which I combine TA, FA, and CA. All right, to come up with this two RI. So this is my latest February RI. My RI is actually this black line over here. All right, it's stretched from 1999 until 2021 for the last 22 years. All right, basically it has uh, accompanied me uh, the data for the last 22 years because I'm in the market for the last 22 years. All right, so green color means uh, uh, in technical term, that means it's extremely oversold. Then we have yellow zone, orange zone, and red zone. Red zone means danger. That means extremely overbought. It's like driving a car. You see green light, uh, you should step, uh, step on your accelerator, accelerator and go, right? Same thing. When my RI is at the green zone, that means the stocks in terms of valuation is very cheap, it's oversold. We should be entering to buy. But when the stock, uh, when the line is in the red zone, or uh, that means in the uh, so called the, the, the danger zone, or uh, we should not be aggressively buying stock. Uh, I want to say this 
our, my RI represent the risk level of the US stock market, not commodity, not currency, not uh, uh, bond market, not anything else, is specifically for US stock market. Oh, I can tell you guys, ladies and gentlemen, can you see this red line over here? This is a very critical 60% uh, red line is very important. And there's this blue 30 uh, percent line. Uh, as of now, my RI uh, figure is 63.28, slightly above 60. Uh, so what I meant when there's a state, what I meant when I say there's a significant macro deterioration means when my RI starts to break below this 60% or this red color line. That means we will have a significant macro deterioration. Ladies and gentlemen, don't see that it's just a black, simple black line over here. Within it, I have 14 major TA, FA, and CA indicators. Then within them, there are 47 sub indicators. I look at oil price. I look at the US 10 year minus three months treasury yield. Or I look at a lot of factors. I look at the stock market cycle. Uh, there's a 30 month fixed stock market cycle. All this, I look at the technical part as well. I look at the, uh, the, the high yield bond, the relationship between high yield bond and the US Treasury bond, all this. All, to, all together 47 sub indicators. So I pump in billions of data points to do the crunching. And so this black line is a result of uh, AI technology as well as neural net technology. Also, ladies and gentlemen, so we are at 63.28. What does it mean? Let me pull, uh, 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 overlay this uh, RI against S&P 500, ladies and gentlemen. Remember I say a bear market will come when we see a 20% drop as well as a significant macro deterioration. That means break below the 60% map. Let me give you an example. Can you see my RI, this in the year 2000, it went to a red zone, extremely oversold. Then it came down. Can you see it break below the 60% of the red color line? At the same time, can you see S&P drop from the top to bottom 20%. Can you see drop 20%, RI break below red support line. Because of that, S&P collapsed 50%. Then we went through a bull market. Then can you see over here, our, my R line break below 60% mark. One criteria satisfied. Second criteria, S&P satisfied 20% drop. As a result, we went into a bear market. S&P collapsed by 50%. Then we went through a bull market. Can you see my RI break below a uh, red color line also? But can you see S&P did not collapse 20%. That's why after the, I think it collapsed, uh, it corrected about 15%. Then after that, Donald Trump became the president then because of a tax cut, all this stuff that he did, US stock market continued to ride the trend up. And over here, I did not call for a bear market. I say it was a deep correction. Why? Because look at our RI. Even though S&P dropped, I think 30, 40%, more than 20%, my RI did not break this red color line here. But one thing I want to point out to you guys is this. Can you see my RI line has been declining for the last half a year? It is showing a negative divergence. Can you see S&P has been going up? This is a monthly chart uh, has been going up, but my RI has been coming down. Uh, I'm, I'm already observing a negative divergence already. Also, probably going forward, we may see RI break below this 60% mark, like over here like that. And if later on as S&P or Dow Zone or, or, or NASDAQ or even Russell 2000 collapse 20%,
together with the break of this red color uh, line, then ladies and gentlemen, then I will call for a bear market, which I think is going to happen in the second half of this year. Let's, and it has not broken the red color line yet, so don't worry. Oh, but one thing I want to share you guys is this, very interesting. Uh, you can see the R line goes up, red zone, just come down, goes up to red zone, then come down. Can you see since the bull market started, it has been going up, then come down, then it has been ting ting tong tong between the red color zone and the orange color zone for the last probably uh, uh, three years. All these are the result of what the Federal Reserve, the central bank printing so much money, keeping the interest rate very low. With so much money out there in the market, on it's no wonder all this private asset is going up like US stock market. Also, do take note, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, it's close. My RI is close to the red color line, but we have not seen a 20% drop. Uh, I think to see both of these criteria to satisfy 20% drop and fall below the 60% mark, I believe should be in the second half of this year. When that happened, then I will probably call for a bear market then. Uh, I think uh, after today, I still have a webinar with uh, Kananga probably in the second of the year. So don't worry. Uh, when I come back then, uh, I will show you guys uh, when, uh, whether uh, the RI has break below 60% mark. And if it has collapsed 20%, then probably we are going to a bear market already. But meanwhile, ladies and gentlemen, or just weather through this correction, all right, then enjoy the melt up uh, for down zone 34,000, S&P 4,000, and then like 15,000 before the fine, the, the, the uh, uh, so-called the final arrival of the bear market after 12 long years. I think should be this year already. Uh, if stretch a bit, will be next year. But I think more probably will be second half of this year. Also, let's get prepared. All right. Uh, just to let you guys know, this uh, RI is my proprietary chart. Can only be found in timing and you buy. It's okay. Uh, don't worry. Uh, because I always give a webinar. Uh, I'm very honored to be invited by Kananga to give webinar to you guys. So uh, don't worry. Whenever I'm in a webinar with you guys, I will share about my RI. Uh, so now, so with that, I spoke about the stock market. So next, I'm going to share about commodity market. Also, in the short to intermediate term, this is the cycle chart. Okay, before I go on, uh, I just want to say this. Uh, remember earlier I mentioned, I mean, all the data has already shown, uh, the commodity has a uh, so-called rebound very strongly based on the CRB. Can you see? And this commodity bull run, I can tell you based on my cycle analysis research, is going to run till 2024. That means that after bond market, remember, uh, probably then stock market will uh, uh, peak. The latest will uh, then follow by commodity uh, uh, peak, which I see is around 2024. That's why I can tell you inflation is coming back. Commodity prices is coming back. Inflation is coming back. Federal Reserve or the central bank, no choice. They have to increase interest rate. They will be forced to, ladies and gentlemen. But if you ask me, I don't think we are going to hyperinflation. Uh, that's not likely, but probably a stagflation. That means the economy not doing well, but we are going to have inflation. That's what we call stagflation. All right. So now let's come back. Uh. Commodity. I think a commodity that a lot of people are very interested in this commodity is called gold. But generally, I just want to say this, commodity is going to have a bull run until 2024. In a short to intermediate term, this is a, a cycle chart for gold. Uh, for gold, we probably will see a turning point or uh, towards end of March. Can you see? Before the next turning point, in probably early or middle of July. Let's focus here, ladies and gentlemen. If there's a turning point around end of March, okay, 
I'm going to show you live on how I analyze. Uh, probably let's go to a price chart of gold. I already show you the cycle information, right? Based on the cycle chart. So allow me to share about gold, uh, which I think a lot of people are very excited, interested, like interested, not excited. All right. Can you see gold price has been coming down? Let me give you all a longer view. Probably 10 years. Let's look at gold price. Gold price reached a high of about 1923 uh, uh, in 2011. Then it came down. And especially last year, it has a good run uh, until August last year, reached a high of 2089. Then since August last year, it has been turning down. Let me show you uh, August last year. So probably let's look at two years. So can you see August 2020, since a high of 2089, it has been coming down. Can see right? Let me zoom in a bit more. One year. Then let's draw some lines. This is the resistance over here, which is 2089. What I see of gold is this. Let me draw this. There's a resistance line here. Let me draw another channel line so that y'all can better see better. Y'all see anything? Hey, first, just to make sure. Shane, we are looking at my price chart, right? Yes, correct. Uh, just to make sure. Stock charts. Okay, okay. So... Can you see, based on this channel line, we are at a support here and there's a horizontal support line. So I'm looking at gold price may be supported around here. And remember, the cycle chart information is telling me there's a turning point in end March. There's a turning point. So my, 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 my take is this, my take is this, let's go back to the price chart. Huh? I don't expect the gold price to wow, deep to 1,600, 1,500 come down, but I do think that probably a support may be near already. And then it will rebound from there. All right, and going forward, like what I mentioned, we are going through a commodity bull run. Uh, uh, I'm expecting the gold price to uh, go higher, uh, even uh, so-called overtake this uh, 2089, uh, this uh, uh, August last year of uh, the high of 2089. Uh, so uh, I'm not too pessimistic about gold. Uh, the, the, the downside may not be a, a lot. And based on cycle chart, we may be seeing a turning point probably around end of March. All right. So this is for go. Uh, this for go. Let me very quickly cover silver. Uh, because a lot of people say uh, probably go too expensive. Then... Uh, Let's look at silver to see what kind of opportunity we have. So this is a cycle chart of silver. Uh, this cycle chart also just crunched two days ago. Can you see silver? We are also, also seeing a turning point probably around a, uh, end of uh, March, uh, March, April period. Can you see? Then we'll see a directional change until maybe end of August. 
So we are seeing a turning point in silver, probably March, April period as well. When I project this uh, so-called uh, cycle information onto silver price, let's take a look. Silver. Uh, silver has been reacting much better than gold. Gold has been sliding down, right? Silver still down there. Uh, uh, tong, uh, uh, didn't drop a lot. But let me just show you a 10-year view of silver. Uh, this is a 10-year view. Uh, since, okay, probably y'all cannot see clearly. Let me just zoom out a bit more. Probably two zero zero zero. Maybe let's go back to year two thousand. Uh, then now you all can see uh, silver hit a high of fifty dollar. Uh, in twenty eleven, then it came down and it has gone up. Uh, it's still far away from the fifty dollar high here. Can you see? Also, ladies and gentlemen, so with this information, let me go back to the price chart of silver. Can you all see uh, silver probably found a support at this level already? That's why it came down from our $30. August last year, it came down find support around 22, it bounce up. So around 22 is a very strong support. Let me zoom in even further. Let's say two year. Also, it has been uh, 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 faring much better than gold, correct? As you all can see, two year may be a bit long. Let me go one year. Let me draw some lines. Can you all see? Silver seems to have a support around this level. It touched this, it goes up, touch this, goes up. Now it's back to here. Uh, it is at this uh, so-called blue up training support line. Remember, just I show you guys the turning point probably is end of this month or next month, right? So probably uh, we may be seeing silver just have one more deep down to probably to this low here, which is where is 200 day moving average is, for this case is about $24. We may have just one more deep, but after that, uh, we should see silver price uh, going higher, uh, going forward because of a commodity bull run. I do think that silver price is going to uh, clear this uh, $30 high over here and go even higher. Oh, but uh, probably we may see, I don't think silver will run anytime soon, probably hover a bit or even one more leg down. A good support is around 24 before it go higher, probably end of this month or early next month before rebounding and goes up from there to challenge this $30 high over here. All right. So this is what I see of uh, gold and silver, ladies and gentlemen. Also, I just want to say this. Please allow me to go back to my slides. All right. So we are going through a commodity bull run. Uh, uh, gold silver uh, uh, has been uh, not too firm, but we can see oil price has been going up. Uh, now it's about, uh, I'm, I'm talking of WTI, it's about 60 plus dollar. All right, so, uh, but I'm seeing oil price going higher than $60, probably to $75. Oh, that's what I see. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, just to conclude before we go into Q&A, I just want to share you guys this. Because of the uh, signs of the breakdown of the bond market, remember I mentioned uh, bond market is much, much bigger than the stock market, 10 times bigger in fact. So as money move out from the bond market, money will not disappear. Where will they go? 
it will go into US stock market. That's why I say we are going to, after this correction, uh, we are going to see a continued melt up of the US stock market. So if US stock market continue to melt up, I don't think Malaysia market will collapse. Not likely. Not likely. Uh, but is it going to going through a melt up like US market? I don't think so. The main attention will be in the whole world will be the US stock market. So we will have a melt up because of capital flow from bond market into a US stock market and the capital flow into commodity, pushing commodity prices even higher. That means there'll be capital flow from the public debt, which is a bond market to private asset like what? Like US stocks, like commodity and like what? Private assets like what? That's why nowadays you all see Bitcoin and Ethereum, all the cryptocurrency run, right? Yeah, uh, it's because we are seeing a gradual collapse in the confidence in the government. That's why people are putting money in private assets, like stocks, like commodity, like cryptocurrency. All right, I think so with that, uh, I, I give you guys a, a outlook of uh, what I see. All right, so probably now we can go into some q and I'd rather we go through Q&A so that I can answer your uh, question directly. Also with this, probably I'll pass the time back to Shane so that we see if there's any question that I can help to answer. Oh, back to you, Shane. Yeah, thank you so much, Derek, for your insightful session and share your perspective where the market is heading for different asset classes such as bond, equity, and also commodities market. So if any question to ask Derek, please type in the Zoom Q&A box, okay? Not the chat box, okay? I repeat, uh, please type in the Q&A box, not the chat box because we have a full house crowd today. So all of you typing in chat, right? It will, I, I can't be, <laughs> be able to see your messages. Yeah. So type in the Q&A box. For those of you who are streaming in from uh, YouTube, uh, just type your question in uh, the, the live chat. Uh, huh? So uh, let me peek. All right, so uh, let me... I, I get a first question from Peter. Yes. Uh, the question is, since government debts are so high and interest rates are low, some people think the US government will try to suppress the interest rate. So will the Fed do the yield curve control by buying up bonds and fighting against the free market? What is your view, Derek? I think I mentioned this earlier. I already mentioned is uh, Federal Reserve can only control or influence a short-term interest rate they cannot control the long term. Because of that, ladies and gentlemen, that's why we are seeing the US 10-year treasury. Are you going up? And this ETF, which represents the 7 to 10-year uh, treasury bond ETF coming down. Let me show you even longer US treasury bond. Uh. Then you'll understand what I'm trying to say. There's an ETF called TLT. This is actually the iShare 20 plus year treasury. 20 year, no? So it's a longer term. Can you see it's also collapsing? Let me go to, let's say, two year. This COVID-19. Uh, this uh, 20 year uh, bond ETF also collapsed, then it re rebounded. Can you see? But since August last year, can you see it has came down and even went through a waterfall collapse? Ladies and gentlemen, can you all see this? Watch this carefully. It is as this COVID 19 low. I tell you, once it breaks this, ladies and gentlemen, it's coming down. So I can tell you, Federal Reserve can only influence short term, one month, two month, three month. They cannot influence long term because long term is a uh, uh, so-called uh, 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 influenced by the free market. There's only so much Federal Reserve can do. You understand? And with the inflation coming back, no, no, we can understand. Federal Reserve, they has two mandate. First mandate, uh, so-called maximize uh, employment rate. That means they need to keep unemployment rate low. Second mandate, or they have to maintain a stable uh, 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 
a price level or inflation rate, which they always keep on saying is 2%. But after printing so much money, after cutting the interest rate to uh, uh, zero, they keep on using the same excuse. Hey, the inflation never hit 2%. Right? Recently, Jerome Powell even came out. Even hit 2%, right? don't worry. Oh, we will still do stimulus. He mentioned this. But I just want to say this. There's only so much he can do. Later on, he will be forced by the free market. And what I say, he, he cannot keep on print already because later on, market don't buy, buy this anymore. We are seeing the collapse in the so-called in the government and the central banks. Also, with inflation coming back, I can tell you interest rate is going to turn up, which I see is going to the second half this year. Inflation is coming. I already told you all, I showed you just now CRB. The, the, uh, the commodity prices is turning up. Inflation is coming back. Also, naturally, interest rate will turn up. Also, this is my take to the question. Lah, huh? So I hope I've answered that question. Huh? Back to you, Shane. Mm, all right. Um, now, just now you forecast that the uh, bond market will first implode uh, first and then uh, and then the money will flow from the bond to the stock market, causing it to have a melt up. And then you forecast that uh, towards the end of the year that the, uh, the market will also crash again. So what would cause the stock market to crash? Uh? Sovereign debt crisis and the global monetary crisis. That's, that's what's going to cause the, the, the finally the, the, the thing to give way, the stock market to give way, SDC and GMC, which I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Mm, all right. So let's go to the third question, which is uh, just now you mentioned that the US uh, bond you and also the bond. Uh, the question by the CLT is that, uh, you see, recently the US bond yields have been spiking up, so causing yes. the stock market to drop. So why is it drop? Uh, shouldn't it be going up because the people have been selling bond, they should flow back to the stock and why the stock market drop? So that's his question. Okay. Uh, this is a very good question. This is the uh, US 20-year uh, bond, right? Oh, yes, been coming down uh, since August last year. Hey, y'all can look at my price chart, right? Yes. Okay. Let me put against the, let's say S&P 500. Let's take a look. Let's say I put S&P 500 as blue color line so easier for us to see well, i remove all the moving average huh, so that y'all will not get confused let me remove all this so can you see this is this blue line is actually the s p 500 And this uh, black color is actually the US 20 plus year treasury bond ETF. Since last year, August, it has been coming down. Uh, that's why money coming out from bond market has pushed S&P even higher. We are seeing that already. Can you see that? You, I just want to say this. You cannot say, oh, tonight bond market drop, uh, then US stock market must go up. Hey, we are talking about trillions of dollars. <laughs> trillions of dollars cannot move within a night, one, ladies and gentlemen. It's a gradual process because trillions of dollars is being handled by a lot of fund manager or institution. They take time to move the money. You understand? So it's not, oh, tonight US uh, the, the bond market drop, uh, what US stock market go up, it doesn't work this way, ladies and gentlemen. But we can see the trend is the bond market is coming down, the money come out, where did it go? It go to a US bull market, uh, a bull, a stock market, that's why pushing it higher. It's just that recently we have some correction. All right, this is, could be a lot of reason. One of it is 
the, the fear of the inflation uh, because they are saying, oh, yeah, increase of interest rate uh, is something bad for the uh, uh, so-called the, 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 the stock market. Uh, but regardless what it is, uh, we can have all sorts of reasons. But the true fact is this, there's a lot of money floating out there. Uh, and since money is going to move out from bond market, because of the trouble in the bond market, it is going into private asset like what? Stock market. That's why I say we will still have melt up. The bear market is not over yet. We will still have a melt up in the US stock market. That's why I, I give my forecast down zone 34, S&P 4,000, NASDAQ 15,000. Uh, we probably will have a melt up, probably a parabolic run, like what we see last year in something like the glove stock. Uh, or even uh, uh, since uh, early, uh, end of last year, what happened to a cryptocurrency that kind of melt up. Then finally, we see this bull market after 12 years finally end and we will go into a bear market probably in the second half of this year. All right. So hope that answered the question. So back to you, uh, Shane. All right. So uh, there are several questions asking about uh, your view on the Chinese stock market will will it crash together with the US stock market? Wait, my take is this: uh, since we talk about this, uh, let's look at SSEC Shanghai. You are looking at my price chart, right? Yes. Yeah. So let's look at Shanghai. Uh. Shanghai uh, 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 stock exchange composite. Yes, yes, it has come down a bit as well. Uh, this blue color line is a 50-day moving average. Can you see? Uh, I mean, in, in short to intermediate term. I draw, can you see? I can draw a support line. And it bouncing off this uh, blue uptrending support line and the 50-day. So later on, after this correction is over, I expect uh, China market to go higher. All right, let me just zoom out a bit more, let's say maybe three years. There's a saying for China, FIFO, first in, first out. They are the first to enter into COVID-19. They are also the first one who came out. Also, the, 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 the thing to me is, uh, if you look at this, Technically, uh, technically, uh, this is, it came down. I mean, over here, it found support here, it goes up. Now it's finding another support. So after this correction over, that's why I say it will continue to go up. And then later on, when US uh, uh, went into a bear market, likewise, China will go into a bear market as well. But but it will not be so bad like the US stock market. Oh, uh, I like what I say, I specialize in cycle analysis. So uh, there's actually a 510 year world, uh, world dominant cycle. All signs are pointing to me that US uh, uh, is going to overtake, uh, not US, China is going to overtake US as the world largest economy and the global financial cap capital probably will go over to China, maybe Shanghai, all right? The year I'm looking at is around 2032. Also, uh, this coming bear market, China will drop less. Whole world will drop. Uh. Like, you know, in the beauty contest, uh, is to choose the most, most pretty girl, right? So in the bear market, this coming bear market, uh, it is to choose the least ugly. That means the, the one that dropped the least to me is going to be China market. All right. So uh, that's my view uh, about the uh, China market. All right. Back to you, Shane. Mm, all right. There are also several questions on uh, crypto asset. Uh. Oh. So Derek, what is your view on crypto, especially like Bitcoin with like more and more companies such as Visa, MasterCard being involved Will crypto be another safe asset? I just want to say this. Uh, 
a lot of people view crypto or Bitcoin like digital gold. For me, uh, for me, at this point of time, I do not treat cryptocurrency or even Bitcoin, uh, even though uh, Tesla bought into it, Square bought into it, all this micro uh, strategy bought into it. I don't treat them like a store of values. A store of value uh, to me cannot drop 20, 30, 50% long. <laughs> if it's a store of value, how can it drop so much? You, you understand what I'm saying? So, but to me, cryptocurrency, they are, they are just like any asset classes, it's good for trading. Oh, I, I can let you guys know, I myself have been trading uh, Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum. In fact, uh, last year and I bought into Ethereum, within one or two months, I doubled. So it's a very good trading instrument, I would say. That's why I say the crisis is in the public debt, the collapse in the confidence in the government. Money is going to shift up, go to where? Go to US stock market, go to commodity, go to cryptocurrency, go to things that are private, not controlled by the government or the banks. That's why if you ask me, I say I'm positive about cryptocurrency. Or don't ask me whether can buy or not or how much you'll go. I cannot mention this. Uh, I'm not here to advise you, but for my own money, I'm I I I I, I am in cryptocurrency. All right, and I do believe uh, some of the money that flow off from the bond market is going to go into crypto and cause it to go higher. That's my view, uh, but I will never treat tri cryptocurrency as a store of value, at least not now. For example, Bitcoin, probably the fourth halving, but not now. All right, that's my view about cryptocurrency. All right, back to you, Shane. Mm, all right. There are also several questions asking about, you know, uh, the response. Like since you are doing a, a forecast that the, uh, the, the market may crash in the second half of this year. So how should we position ourselves uh, for, for, for this, for this uh, scenario? <clears throat> okay. So let's don't talk about the crash part first. Huh? Let's come back because we still have the mail up, remember? So after this correction is over, we can enjoy the melt in the US stock market. And where, if you don't know where to go to, don't need to go far already because you can open an account with Kanaga because Kanaga can trade US stocks. All right, so if you haven't have an account, please open with Kanaga, okay? We write the melt up, up. Kananga, we also can trade commodities using Kananga platform. So just like I mentioned about gold and silver, right? And the turning point probably is coming soon, right? There may be another opportunity. All right. So we are right the commodity bull run, the melt up, probably until the second half of the year when bear market come. What we can do is we can, uh, uh, in US market, we can do short selling by buying inverse ETF. I think there are also inverse ETF in Malaysia market. Uh, you all can go and do your homework. Uh. I, 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 I don't want to mention any name, uh, but there are ETF in Malaysia market that you can do short selling. It's an inverse ETF. Uh, we can then buy into all these inverse ETF to short the, probably the US uh, indexes like Dow Zone or S&P. Uh, I would say there are more of this inverse ETF in the US market and is available in Kanaga, Kanaga platform. Also make use of Kanaga platform to help you ride the melt up as well as ride the trend down during bear market. If you need information, please look for professionals from Kanaga, their uh, staff, or you can call in or ask uh, uh, the personnel from uh, Kanaga to assist you guys, all right? So that's my answer, Shane. All right. So the next question is asking about cyclical stock. Now, since Federal Reserve comment about cyclical stocks. 
Oh, so, okay. okay. Now, since Federal Federal Reserve comment that they will not rise uh raise interest rate this year, so and bonds are collapsing while bond yields is rising with inflation expectation. So the question is, should we expect cyclical stocks to perform well this year? Actually, if you ask me, uh, like what I mentioned earlier, Federal Reserve they can say they won't increase interest rate later. Uh, probably second half of year, they'll be forced to do so. So uh, I think one of the sectors we probably look at is those sectors that's going to benefit favorably from the increased interest rate. So I don't know. I think one of the sector is actually financial, especially banks. Increased interest rate actually uh, will inc improve their earning. But on the other hand, what are the sectors that's going to impact from the increased interest rate? Uh, probably the utilities or even the REITs. Uh, raising increase interest rate is going to impact them uh, so-called uh, negatively. Also, probably I may not be interested. Let's take a look. Don't need to uh, go too far. Let's take a look. Uh, for example, there's a, a utility ETF. This is a uh, utility select sector SPDR fund in US market utility. Can you see it's coming down already? So that's why I say you all this uh, interest rate sensitive uh, uh, like utilities, telecom, all this, they probably will not fare well, but those that benefit from increased interest rate, like financial, let's take a look. There's an ETF called XLF. Uh, can you see it's been going up because of anticipation in the increased interest rate? Also, to play interest rate, uh, I think I've just shared already. So, uh, if you are in Malaysia or Singapore, you can take the this sector outlook and then project into the individual stock in your own country. Probably you should look at your banks or you, you should not be looking at utilities. Also, this is a direction uh, I can point you to, but I can tell you, I cannot tell you what stock to buy. I cannot do that. I cannot give advice. All right, do take note. All right. So back to you, uh, Shane. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, how do you see uh, tech stocks going upward? Because just now you mentioned that NASDAQ is very vulnerable to uh, further yeah. crashes. Just now I show you all right, the NASDAQ seems to be forming a head and shoulder. Uh, let's go back. Uh, let's go back uh, to the, my slide. Oh, that's why there's a sector rotation. Right? Tech stock have been doing well. Also, probably all the fund manager institution, they're starting to take profit. You see NASDAQ? All right, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, break this uh, probably 13,000 support. Uh, I think it's coming lower. But I just want to say this. If we break this support, it may come lower to maybe 12,100 to 12,500. But I don't think it's going to collapse. Uh, we, I, I still think it's going to bounce up, pr probably going up to challenge 15,000. That's my take. So I don't think it's going to collapse, uh, but correction is coming, especially if this 13,000 cannot hold. Uh, I think it's coming down. So I, I cannot tell talk about any individual stocks, uh, but uh, whatever it is, because we are riding into the last leg of this bull market, my take is this, don't try to, uh, uh, how should I say, bottom fish, or try to buy stock at a cheap. We are at the tail end of the bull market already. Uh, what I will do is I'm going to buy stock that's breaking high and sell higher. I'm running on this melt up, on this momentum to make my money. Uh, now to me, it's not the best time to do uh, value investing, unfortunately. Value investing to me, the best time uh, to, me, uh, uh, to me is probably uh, 209. That was the best time to do value investing. 
And to me now is not a good time to buy and hold because a bear market is coming in. Unless you believe that this bull market uh, is going to continue into 20, 23, 24, 25, 20, 30, uh, then you buy and hold. Uh. But seriously, if we look at this, I think after this bull is over, it's coming down, uh, we, are going, we will be going into this bear market. And I have a feeling because this time around, it has really gone up a lot for a long time. This time around, uh, the previous bull mar uh, bear market was about a 50% collapse. I'm expecting this time around to be deeper than 50%. Or oh, it could be 60%, maybe two thirds. Oh, uh, 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 all this. And because it's deeper, that's why, ladies and gentlemen, uh, learning how to do short sell is important. All right. Uh, one way is by buying to inverse CTF, uh, which is available in Kanaga platform. Uh, but don't worry, uh, don't worry. As long as the RI doesn't break below this red color line and we do not have a 20% drop, then we are not going to have a bear market yet. But do take note, my RI is coming down already. Uh, it's coming down. has been declining for the last almost half a year already. Uh, don't worry. Uh, I'll be back again. I think it's the second of this year. Maybe then... I'll be able to show you where is my RI then. All right? Okay. Yeah. Stay tuned on our updates. We will let you know when Derek is coming back for his <laughs> second sessions. Okay, let's do uh, one more question from YouTube. Uh, so uh, let me see the name. Huh? Okay, this is... Uh... Okay, so today I lost track of the name. <laughs> Okay, so Tian, Tian is asking about US dollar index DXY. So what is your view on this? I've been waiting for this. Actually, I leave it. I, I uh, see whether anyone will ask or not. Finally, someone asked. <laughs> so I'll just share. Uh, to answer this question, uh, let me... This is my cycle chart for uh, US dollar. All right, US dollar. So I see there's a turning point, probably around early May. I'll just remember there's a turning point probably around early May. When I project this cycle information onto US dollar index. Let's take a look. Here we are. Again, uh, in case you all didn't see, it's early May. Can you all see? It's 1st May to 1st June. So this is uh, early May. So with this information, this US dollar index, eh, sorry, not US. This is US dollar index. Uh, so I do see that this is what I see. The turning point member is uh, probably early May. So there's a resistance here around 91.50. Uh, so uh, I should expect, I'm expecting the US dollar index to challenge this. Uh, Resistance here. Uh, once you can clear this, probably you will go higher. Then you'll make a resistance around the 200 day moving average around here. All right. Until the next turning point, probably is early May. Uh, that's why I see. Uh, in the short to intermediate term, I'm bullish on the US dollar until early May. Uh, provided this uh, uh, resistance over here. Uh, can be broken, then we will see go higher. Probably challenge this 200 day moving average. All right, but uh, a lot of people thought uh, over here, oh, it's going to break down and go lower. Can you see what well, it suddenly has a reversal? Very interestingly. All right, and uh, 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 let's see whether it can break this, which is about. How much? Uh, wait, I see. Uh, 
9161. Once you can clear 9161, probably you will hit a bit higher or towards here. But the next turning point is probably around early May. Oh, that's where I see. All right. Back to you, Shane. All right. Great. So, uh, I think we have our Q&A session is coming to an end. Of course, there are just so many questions that we <laughs> uh, that you asked in the in, in the comment session.